Good morning, everybody. Are you here? Good morning, William. Hello. Good morning. Anybody home? Hi, William. Are you there? Yeah, sorry, I was joining with my audio. Oh, uh, good morning. Good morning. Yes. Well, just you and me so far. <laughs> or yeah. Oh my goodness. What I'm happened? A class like that? right before this, so I just like joined this Zoom right after that one. Oh, you just finished the uh, the other class. Yeah. So how how's everything so far? Tough. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to find like the right article. Mm, that will be a while. Usually a matter of good half day. Yeah, I'm That's I'm like minimum. yeah I'm like trying to narrow it down in SciFinder with the side planner. Yeah. Yeah, as long as you pick a a article with good substance. Mm -hmm. you, you're presenting it right you don't yeah know. yeah and as long as the article itself has good selling point you're you're so fine you just need to make sure you know what you're talking about right <laughs> yeah you have to like know everything they're saying right or just connect uh the stories together mm -hmm. and make it like it has to make sense to the audience. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so how, how many classes are you taking? Mm. <clears throat> Let me think. Cause, yeah, like four. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, but they're not all chem classes. I'm taking two that are just like elective classes. Mm-hmm. I, I guess uh, for today, my goodness, I think uh, people know uh, uh, this from from yesterday. Um, I, I didn't I didn't want to lecture too much now because you guys need some time and room to digest whatever already provided to you. It's a lor already a lot of a theory etc involved mm -hmm. and so tell me uh <clears throat> dr lopez promised that he will upload a video for the class for the lecture he missed this past mm -hmm. monday did he do that let me see if it's online I didn't see an email or anything about it. Um, so he didn't. Wait. Um, no, I don't think so. He usually posts it on, on Beachboard, right? He didn't really upload it on YouTube or other you know, platform. Yeah, in his Beachboard, he has like a recorded lecture section. And I don't see a new one there. I just see the one from the sixth. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, that means, my goodness, that means uh, you, you only have one lecture to go according to the schedule. Uh, what I'm saying is next Monday, there should be another lecture from Dr. Lopez, right? Yes, because he's moving the exam. Right. Let me, let me show you what I have right now very scary when when i see the schedule right here okay are you able to see my screen yes now we are numbers for uh number 13 right now 
we have this uh, peptide report postponed a week, and he is supposed to do asymmetric synthesis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he, he, you know something, this topic alone, I think he needs two lecture sections to, to really finish it. And yeah. so if, if you take the midterm, uh, the week of 15, and then you provide another one, I don't know how, how he can get around that <laughs> schedule. It's so jammed. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a feeling it's probably not too much from the asymmetric synthesis. So he's actually making this uh, chapter, sh he shortened the chapter, in other words. Mm, like the material. Right. He will not teach much on this, on this topic. It, it is actually a lot. You know, I have already covered half of the models uh, that's supposed to be introduced in this, in this topic. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least three. In the past, from Dr. Nagayama, yeah, there are three models at least. Okay, yes, yeah, so the falcon on and the cram. The, the, uh, the falcon on, that is the, the most basic entry level. Then mm -hmm. the other one is the, the cram chelation, so it is like one step forward. And then we usually and, go one more step. Yeah, it is, yeah, for you just do chelation, you just need to know the restrictions when you apply this model. Mm -hmm. And then one step forward, you will have to learn the other transition, which is called Zimmerman Trexler. Mm. And that one is it's for aldo synthesis. When you have a planar molecule coming to another planar molecule, so depending on the you know the position, straight flip side or on on the other molecule, it is also possibility two possibilities of straight contact or the flip side contact. And yeah, then there are four possibilities of forming the stereo isomers, and you need to get that model. Uh, you know, introduced in order to make prediction. That is a little bit more complicated than the, the first two. But as, if you do, if you can do the first two, learning the third is not too bad. Okay. It should, yeah, it should be okay. But I just don't know how much he will be teaching along this line. So I am waiting for students to give me feedback from his lecture, how far does he go? You may be waiting till after his Friday lab section to see if what he can cover if we're ahead of his lab section. Oh, you know something? Uh, Dr. Schenkweiler will be teaching the lab, not, not Dr. Lopez. Oh, okay. For the Friday lab. So uh, again, to, for, t for this week, Dr. Schenkweiler should be teaching the green yard. And of course he will do the same like, you know, I have, like what I have done so far. Mm -hmm. I just don't know, you know, in the lecture, okay, now be careful with, with Dr. Lopez's lecture because during the last week, we're talking about the week of number 14, mm -hmm. he, he will put all these substance together in one lab, uh, not lab, the lecture, the, the real class lecture. Mm -hmm. So if he puts everything together here, that means everything he said during this last lecture, that will be in the final exam. Yeah. And so whether you have time to actually learn uh, from his lecture, I think you, you guys, if possible, just give me some, some um, feedback how much he has covered and maybe I can contribute something for you to you know help master yourself <laughs> master the subject um, it takes more learning than you know just listening to the lecture or the stereochemistry you really need to go through some exercise you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's just like doing the limiting reagent you have to do the actual work to, to know what is being taught in the class. 
Okay, let me see how many people are here now. Oh, we have five participants. Yeah, my um my laptop was on like two percent, so oh I hope it don't die right now because I had to juice it up. <laughs> oh, do you have a charger? I have it on a charger, but like for it to do yeah. Zoom, so you don't, yeah. The 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 same problem everybody has now. It is the internet connection. Uh, how about you, George and uh, Baraza? Are you all doing well? Hello. Hi. So far, so good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's all good. Okay, are you being overloaded with a lot of work? Yes, one hundred percent. Thank you. A hundred percent. Well, you know something, uh, this week I, you know, since I got the ALDO official grading scheme from Dr. Lopez yesterday, I can do some grading this week. Yes. Okay. It's then I will be able to upload your ALDO uh, grade uh, on board, I mean, on, on Beachboard. Uh, I want all of you to provide me the feedback on Dr. Lopez's lecture schedule on the 27th. My understanding from, doc, uh, from William, Dr. Lopez didn't really give you guys a, a video for his lecture missed Monday. He did not release a video yet, right? Not that I know of, no. I don't know. I know he said he was going to. That's the problem. A lot of times he says he will, well, he will come back to you. Then he's distracted elsewhere. The same problem, you know, I, and, and, but, you know, imagine, I believe either this, this semester or next semester in the summer should be his last semester of his, his teaching career. He told me he, he was retiring, okay? And he told me he would not be here in the fall. So imagine this <laughs> last semester of his teaching career. He's, he needs to handle this big crisis. <laughs> this is not what a uh, retiring professor will like to have in mind. You know, in the, in, during the last semester, my goodness, it's a heavy duty one. And so, yeah, try to understand. It's probably too much to ask. Uh, so this is uh, what I just uh, mentioned to William. Okay, so we're now on week of 13, and I finished my part. Okay, I'm, I'm actually on schedule, perfectly on schedule. I'm not behind at all. And so next week, I will spend some time uh, going through the articles you guys picked, okay? And uh, I'll, I'll talk about... Uh, yeah, maybe after I review the particles you picked on the Dropbox, I can give you some feedback, okay? Wait, so is this the updated schedule? Yeah. Not since the midterm has been postponed. Well, and the dipeptide is next Monday, right? So, yes. yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. He didn't really release another revised schedule, okay? We know peptide is postponed to number 14. And then your midterm is postponed to number 15, the week, right? Yeah. So he, will, he is supposed to give you one lecture this week on the asymmetric synthesis. And then next week is another, another the second half of this same topic. Okay, but I have a feeling he probably will put the two lecture in one. That sucks. Please, well, <laughs> Andrew, guess what? So I, I just told my Monday, Wednesday section, okay, now be careful with this. His last lecture will be a reflection of how much he want to cover in the final exam. Okay, this is, you know, the general, my general ob observation about lecture professor. Okay, during the last, the very last lecture, you know, in, in order to use the same exam they have from the past, they want to cover the topics already covered in the previous semester. 
Okay, and then so they will put all the topics, all the important topics during the last two uh, lectures. So if he just lightly touched maybe five, 10 minutes on certain topics, and I just don't want you to assume, oh, because you only spent five, 10 minutes there, so it's not important. I can tell you, please just think the opposite way, okay? That means it is some topic you probably have to learn on your own. Understand? Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's why I, I, I just told uh, William, okay, on this topic, asymmetric synthesis, you have learned already the Falcon on model, also the Crane chelation model, right? You have learned two entry level model for prediction of new chiral center. I want you also learn uh, uh, to give me the feedback. Okay, just in case, Dr. Lopez also introduced another model, which is called the Zimmerman Trexler model, that is for aldo synthesis. Then let me know because at least I can provide you another another uh, video where I can find some information to help to help you learn better. Because during the past few years of my observation. A lot of questions will just come from this chapter, asymmetric synthesis. Do you hear me? Yes. A lot of questions will come from here. Okay, so the two models are just considered basic. You, the two models covered by our Green Yard experiment, they're just considered basic. Okay, there is another advanced one, more a little bit more complicated. Okay, and just in case he also introduced that, then let me give you another video so you can learn a lot better okay yes. because in the past i've seen those questions in the final every single year okay all right so this is for the vaccine part uh, for you to get the <laughs> preparation mentally all right the other thing is okay today i want to give you some uh, touch up understanding for the dipeptide report. And before we step into this report requirement, uh, I want to go back to the <clears throat> green yard because last time I did ask everybody <clears throat> about the green yard reaction. Remember this? Okay. The benzoin, right? And then green yard reagent, then you produce stereoisomers. Remember, I asked all of you to calculate the moles of this 10% sulfuric acid. Have you done that? Yes. Uh, okay. So tell me, what have you got in terms of moles? For <clears throat> the one done by volume or done by mass? Either. Okay. For the one done by volume, I got 2.02 .02 moles of hydrogen. Then for the other one, I got. Oh, hold, hold on, hold on. That is not the same number. Not the same. If I do this wrong. Okay, Williams, can you say that again? Based on the, <clears throat> if this ten percent is based on gram per one hundred mL or grams. That one's for mLs. mL. Okay, so what? So what is your hydrogen plus? Uh, 2.02 .02 molar. Oh, no way, no way. You only okay. use 50, you only use 50 ml. Oh, but that's for a liter. You want the moles of hydrogen? I want moles of hydrogen from this 50 ml. Okay, that one I got 0 0.101 moles. That's right. That is right, if it is based on ML. Okay, now, so ladies and gentlemen, I'll give uh, uh, William uh, you know, one point. Very good. So who else is here? Peraza, are you here? Is Peraza here? I think she can only type. She can only type, but I, I, I don't see her typing here. One, two, so we have seven students here. Really good. Okay. Uh, just want to give you some, yeah, William, I'll give you one point. Okay. Good job. Uh, I think, William, can you introduce what you have done 
uh, verbally, just tell people what you have done. And then, uh, you know, this may be in the questions that Dr. Dr. Lopez will ask you guys to do in the, in the report. Mm -hmm. Let me see. So I'm not going to publish the answer here, okay? <laughs> That's okay. I think sometimes the connection that, th thank you for helping uh, 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 this is Andrew, right? Uh, a lot of times students just completely lost the connection, internet connection. So I, I understand. Okay, William, can you tell people just on verbal basis? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Yeah, okay, so go ahead. So um, since it's a 10% solution and we're using 50 mLs, That's I right. said that we would be adding five grams of the H2SO4 and then from that, I used the molar mass to find the amount of moles of H2SO4, and then I doubled it for the amount of hydrogen. Exactly. This is, this is what you're supposed to do if this 10% here is based on gram per 100 ml. Okay. All right. On the other scenario, just in case, because well, oftentimes, if it is not specified, Okay, then it's really up to the issue room, whatever they give us, we will just have to take it. Okay, but just in case they give you 10% grams of this sulfuric, uh, sulfuric acid in 100 grams of solution and you use 50 ml. Okay, now try to understand. There is an inconsistent unit right here. Okay, you're told to use 50 ml, but right here 10% is based on grams of the solution then all you have to do is find the <clears throat> density of this 10% solution which is 1.84 so that 50 ml will be translated to 92 grams okay 92 grams of solution and since we're using 10% of it then that 10% will be giving you 9.2 grams of the solute, so freaking acid, okay? So from that grams, you can convert to moles again for this molecule, then you, don't, you can find the moles of a hydrogen plus, okay? So just want to tell you, okay, uh, because this, this is a question from uh, the past in the report, so uh, I, I, I'm giving you some verbal instruction. I cannot post the answer here, okay? And I, I can tell you from either the approach I gave you based on 100 grams of solution or based on Williams 100 ml of solution, either way, either way, you are reaching uh, or you are given sufficient amount of hydrogen plus to protonate the alkoxide. Okay, either way, okay, both exceeds in great amount in the moles of hydrogen plus for the protonation of alkoxide, okay? And so I just wanna finish the chapter right here. And then um, let's talk about the peptide experiment now, okay? Because this is supposed to be due next Monday, right? Okay, so before I step away, is there any other question here? Can you at least type your response and let me know if you need to ask question? Uh, no. um, all those added points, when will we see them on like some type of... Are you talking about the bonus point? Mm -hmm. The bonus point will be given at the end of semester. Okay. Okay, I will show that in the gray book, okay? Okay, and I do that all the time. People know my reputation, okay? Every point you earned as a bonus, it carries the same weight as every point you learn, you earned from the report or class exam, okay? So nobody, nobody got a 10 out of 10 on a pre-lab. I just want to one. No, one person did. Wait, what? Yes. Was it in the other section? The other section, yeah. Oh, I can yeah. tell you a uh, section on Monday. There, there's a group of students 
there are top-notch students. They always work together. I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> they, know, right? they, yeah. they really utilize every piece of hint I provide, and then they always try to reach me, and then, you know, uh, try to check if their answers were right or etc. Non-stop. Okay, this is the true attitude of uh, the, the A students. Okay, you don't let go easily. Okay, I, uh, and you guys have the same potential. Don't just, don't even as well. I don't I don't want you to underestimate your own potential. Okay, you all have the same. No, I'm not underestimating the potential. I know exactly who you're talking about, and they work together all the time. They're all like, the time. Yes, they're like super good. Super good. I can tell you, uh, every semester, I, I, I'm able to pick up a, a couple of students like that. And actually, two years ago, there was a student, I can even tell you the name. His name is Zubin uh, Patel, okay? Oh, they, then, yeah, I know who you're talking about. You know him? Do you know him? I know. Oh, my goodness. He, he was basically a, a tutor for CAM 420. He volunteered himself as a tutor, okay? And he, because he was trained in my 320L, he knew my expectation since, you know, a year ago. And then, so when I taught him the 420, he knew exactly how, you know, when I provide hint, when I say this is bonus point, he will work on it. And, and, and then guess what? He influenced all the other students, you know, to, to work together. So, wow, people always come to him for answer. And at the end of semester, this whole class was just amazing, okay? I can tell you, it all depends on who you work with. You will pick up the, the work habit from each other, okay? I just wanted to verify that what they said was true. <laughs> it is true, go ahead and talk to him. Go ahead and talk to Zubin to Patel. And at the end of semester, he no, I'm not talking about Zubin. I'm talking about I know I know what what, what Zubin said is true. I was talking about uh, uh, the other classmate did to you. <laughs> yeah, I was that is Andrew. That means you are highly respected. Okay. Ah, uh, yes, I, I was like, you. you're lying. There's no way. It's like yeah. <laughs> okay. People respect your knowledge. It's great. Okay, and so you all have the same great potential. Please just you know. Build that habit, build the work habit together, okay? All right, so before I step away, any more question? So I can talk about what needs to be turned in, okay? Peptide report, I want to show you right here. Because Dr. Lopez has not responded back regarding mm -hmm. the requirement in details, okay? So I'll just take his instruction as is, and I'll ask everybody to write a report according to his instruction here on this page. Have you got this report, I think, report requirement from Dr. Lopez? Yes, it's yes. on okay. each board. Okay, so I will tell you, I will grade the, uh, your dipeptide report according to whatever it says here. I will not change it, okay? So go ahead, introduction, discuss the need for a protective group, Okay, and how you want to activate the carboxyl group. Okay, then the re reaction scheme for all reaction perform. You did two. Okay, so go ahead. Reaction scheme. That means you know it's not the same as mechanism. Okay, don't don't stretch to that extent. I just need a good balance equation. Okay, show me what happened on on reaction one and reaction two. Then explain, okay, uh, amino acid in terms of sweater ion. Okay, you learned that already. Okay, so get to the point. Okay, explain. Okay, all right. So at the end, reaction one will give you a product that is not sweater ion. Okay, then why? We want you to explain why, then you tell me why. Okay, I was just, you know, when I, when I create greeting scheme, I'll just bullet everything asked here, item by item. Um, I don't know if you're showing anything else, but my, my computer screen froze. Like I can't see it. Like my mouse won't even move. Oh, then 
I think William, are you able to see my my screen? Yeah, it's the diet peptide report instructions that Dr. Lopez has up on um, Beachboard. So Andrew, if you already have the printout, look at the printout, okay? Okay, I'm about to restart my computer stuff. You see me disappear, that's what's happening. Okay. All right, now everybody else, I want you to continue, okay? Look at the result and discussion. So very simple, right? Introduction here, then you tell us a whole bunch of why, and then read, uh, result and discussion. Remember, we have this peptide product made in crude and then you recrystallize, right? And remember the crude is actually a mixture. A mixture of what? A mixture of two stereoisomers, right? Okay, we want you to discuss the mechanism. So how does it lead to two stereoisomers? Okay, Dr. Lopez want you to show Discuss how the stereoisomers, are you following my, my arrow right here? We want you to discuss how the stereoisomers could have formed, okay, from this reaction. How does it lead to two stereoisomers? So provide mechanism, okay? So your me mechanism writing is right here. And I want all of you to use ChemDraw, okay? And this mechanism is already covered in the PowerPoints. You, and you actually wrote the mechanism also in the pre-lab. Remember that? Okay. Okay. So do that in this section. Okay. Talk about, yeah, you, you actually have two stereoisomers from uh, this TBTU coupling. All right. And I think I, well, during the last lecture, we were talking about the ratio of this two stereoisomers in the crude, remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, it was, it was the certain peak you have to go after and you have to monitor, yeah, that two, two peaks to see the crude product actually has two components there, right? And after you purify it, okay, you only see one compound, okay, being singled out. Okay, and you show me that. Okay, so how you determine the ratio? Okay, just do that. Okay, you all have the same data. It's really easy for me to grade this part. Okay, and all you need to do is discuss the mechanism. How come you can lead to two stereoisomers, not just one? Okay, all right. Then now this is the other. This is the other part. I ask everybody, and actually that Monday, Wednesday section, okay? Right after I provide students the hint, I said the answer is actually provided in one of the article I provided on Beachboard. And uh, I can tell you that group of students turn around and then they start working on it and they gave me an answer already by email. Okay, now has anyone here worked on this part yet? What is BOP? Okay. I, I've worked on it and I think I know what it is, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, William, I can tell you, uh, well, on that particular page, it is not just BOP being mentioned. It also gives you the answer for this paragraph. Oh, okay. I was, I mainly just like looked at the structure and thought about what my product it would make. Oh, I see. I see. Mm -hmm. And then I looked up the um, like you found the safety information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell you if you know the mechanism associated with TBTU, it will be so similar when you use the BOP. Okay, so similar. You you can uh, create the fragmented molecules and the same way, okay? And then you realize the fragments produced in this process associated with this molecule 
has a byproduct that is so toxic, okay? If you're able to find that page from the literature I have already uploaded, that page has all the answer, okay? It's, it's there. So this is like once in your lifetime, you have to look up uh, in, in details and find specific piece of information. We want you to you know, at least do that research, okay? And it's not difficult, okay? If people are able to do it in, in you know, like an hour or two, I can tell you, you can do the same, okay? So in here, you also need to come up with a mechanism, okay? So once you do the mechanism here, okay, you, you know, it, it will be the same setup that you can use for this BOP, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, for this report, it will be just everything mentioned here. Every task you are asked to do, I would just use a checkbox to grade your report, okay? Okay? Any other question? Let me see who's here now. So anything that's not included on this page, we don't have to include in the formal report? Don't, don't worry, just get to the point. Everything I want is here. Okay. 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 And so there's I'm a no straight path shooter. Path. I, yeah, I, I, I'm a very straight shooter, okay? If I, I didn't ask you to do here, then don't worry. Okay. Okay. okay? All right. So, uh, I guess, you know, it is just for me to pump your knowledge out of <clears throat> your head and see how much you have learned in, in this whole entire, you know, experiment, which is really high fashion, okay? In the past, we did ask students to write a formal report and then it changed to two reports. Okay, so one, you can do it at home, like type report. The other one, you have to answer a question in class, just like the owner Emmons reaction. Okay, yeah, the, the CAM 420, um, it's not a light duty one. Uh, according to the chair, the chairman, this is meant to be a class to train students to do research. So if you take this class, you don't, you're not required to do research, uh, you know, joining any research group and then you know, learn from your advisor, etc., and get rated there. But here in 420, if you don't do the research through joining this advisors group, at least you have the experience doing research. So we are training students doing research through this report requirement, through this lab training, okay? It's the same, very similar format as research you, you expect to have when you join any advisors, okay? So after we turn in our lab report, we're going to take a, a in class. No, it will be just this one. It will be just this type report. Okay, I got email from Dr. Lopez. Uh, this is like three, four days ago. He was he gave me this page. Okay, he says I don't think there will be another report. He that's what he told me. Okay, so in case he come back to see and tell me. You know, uh, collect another report or co collect another uh, 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 in-class uh, uh, evaluation assessment type of a test or whatever questions. I would tell him no, because I would promise my students I only want report from them. I will defend myself. I will defend for you. Okay. I, I have to be honest with you. I've been waiting long enough for Dr. In uh, Dr. Lopez's instruction. Unfortunately, he's too busy, and he was not able to respond to me in timely fashion. And guess what? We're only three days away from the deadline. Am I right? For you, yeah. guys, five days, maybe four days. And if I delay and I wait for him, I, I don't think you want a, a big surprise during the weekend. Miss Jean wants a report in a certain way. I'm Absolutely. not going to do that. I don't have energy now. Absolutely. I, 
Yeah, I, I, I have other deadlines I have to meet too, okay? I awesome. want to get this done, okay? It's because he's probably rewriting the test so it can be an online version of the test. Exactly. You know, he, I'm putting myself in his shoes, okay? This is the, probably the last semester of his whole entire teaching career. And he's in the middle of this crisis management. It doesn't make sense. You know what I mean? For a person who, who is just about to retire. It's just too much work, okay? So, so we, we should let, well, I, I want to let him go, okay? He has done enough. And let's just stick to this, you know, written instructions. And I will not ask anything beyond this point, okay? Beyond whatever is written here. I will not ask you anything beyond here, okay? Mm -hmm. Is that good? Yeah. Okay, so if I were you, get this part going, and then next week we should focus on uh, maybe oral presentation or if you guys need any touch up. But I don't plan to give you a huge lecture at all next week, okay? It's more for me to talk about oral presentation, whether you guys have um, anything you need to watch out for, or um, I will give you some comments if I see anything I don't like. In terms of the, the articles you pick for oral presentation, okay? So if I, yeah, if I see anything that I should say something, then I'll tell you, okay? Yeah, so the, the we're giving the presentation, we're, we're gonna just, we're, we're recording ourselves. Yeah. I'm still I'm still confused about that, but okay. Let me let me tell you. This is what Dr. Lubas told me. Okay, uh, I think he gave you guys instruction also already by announcement, right? About this oral presentation, right? Mm. Hello, have you got um, that? There may have been an email. Let me look. There is there was an email. Hold on, I think it is from. Uh, okay, hold on. Here. Oh, look at this. I will need to get back to you. However, I believe we only need one part. This is about the peptide report. Look at the title. Okay. So this is what he told me. Let me see another one. Right here. Okay, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. All presentation, okay, 10 to 12 slides or 10 to 15. Recorded. Is that supposed to be minutes? No, no, slides. Oh, okay. Right here? I can tell you, uh, no, 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 no. For you to talk about 10 to 12 slides, it's not going to be 15 minutes, okay? Okay. At least 20 minutes, <laughs> right? Okay. And then you submit the uh, video to the instructor, and then I can ask questions by email, okay? That's it and you respond to the email. That's the only way. Okay. I mean, I also thought that was minutes. Based on my experience, okay, each student will have to spend um, 
on their own feet, spending 20 to 30 minutes. Easy. Okay. Just imagine for the introduction part, you know, just to educate the audience about the background information associated with the article. I think 10, 15 minutes, uh, easy, 10 minutes at least, okay? Then you, you spend another 10, 20 minutes talking about what has been done or what kind of a reaction is involved, okay? And what might, you know, the important observation and then what you have learned from this research, you know, that easily is 10 minutes, okay? Just education part, it's already 10 minutes. When I say education, meaning that you have to tell the audience why you do this, okay? Why is this important? What is the, what is the, uh, the value of it? Stuff like that, okay? Okay, and then he, Dr. Lopez always said he, 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 will, he, will, back to, he will get back to you. Uh, and then he says, I'll post the lecture later today, tomorrow. I, I don't know. It is up to you to follow up, okay? His lecture is still, is still up in the air, am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's too much work. Just too much work, okay? And so everybody, do you have uh, any questions? Are you able to handle the peptide report now? Hello? Mm -hmm. Okay, then anyone else here? Do you have a question? If not, I'll say goodbye then. Hello? Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. And okay, I'll see you next Tuesday. All right, bye bye. Well, well, um, bye. Oh, oh, okay, well, what is it? What is it? Did he tell you how to grade the Grignard yet? You said he did, right? How to grade what? In, uh, oh, sorry, the um, Aldo report. Aldo report, he did get back to me, and I got the grading scheme yesterday. Okay. Okay, so this weekend I plan to grade your auto report and I will upload your grade sometime after that. So hopefully next week, either Tuesday or Thursday, I can talk about the common mistake. Okay, for sure. Is that okay? Well, I mean, it just doesn't make sense for us to turn in the report before we know the common mistakes. And that's what I told him, but he didn't really like I guess you know, he didn't do anything about it. Uh, George, I can tell you uh, to him, this is probably not an urgent question. Number one reason, because Aldo chapter has nothing to do with the, the, the peptide experiment. Well, I mean, just because they're both formal reports. Uh, I can tell you, based on the way it is written here, it is not formal report at all. Right, yeah, yeah, I saw that. Not at all, not at all, okay? because yeah, I treated the last one like it was a formal report. The Aldo report itself, okay, uh, yeah. He did ask for a formal report, but uh, he didn't really put the, um, the format as part um, of the reading. I'm assuming that this one doesn't need an abstract? No, not at all. Oh, not okay. at all. I only said introduction, right? I'm saying he only said uh, introduction right here, right? There's no abstract. No. There is no experimental. No. Okay, only introduction and result and discussion. This is really, really like half of what we usually ask. Am I right? Yeah. Wow, that's yes. it? Okay, cool. Yeah, only introduction, result, and discussion. It's actually get to the point, okay? Then this is like a post-lab questions we ask you. Okay, now just in case you're using this as a coupling agent, what do you expect to see? And why this is not being used? Okay? <laughs> I think this is a very, very pleasant report. It's just get to the point and very simple. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a condensed one. 
I'm I'm super excited now because I I I also assumed that we had to do like a formal report. Um, the Aldo one was kind of it, it's, it's Aldo like, is the formal one. That's for an abstract either. But, exactly, so. exactly. Okay, I uh, let me show you. Let me show you uh, originally what was said about this about this peptide. Let me show you. That was really scary. <laughs> when, I, when I read it and then I look at our calendar, my goodness, it is just impossible. Look at this peptide report. There will be two parts, okay? Okay, you know, there's one thing right here and then there is, okay, one thing is in class. And then the other one, okay, now in lab, in, in, in lab, that means in class. The other one is typed outside of lab. Okay? Yeah. He's really nice. He's giving you 50% discount, okay? It's good. It's good. Yeah, I can tell you, uh, among all these professors, Dr. Lopez is is the, the most, I would say, that, that he has a kind heart. His heart is really soft, in other words. He melts easily. <laughs> He's very kind to students, okay? Yeah. And especially when we encounter such a crisis now, and uh, yeah, he's so nice. I, I, I really like his personality, okay? Except you really have to push him for deadline. That's it. Yeah. Other than that, he's just a very, it's an angel. In my eyes, he's an angel, okay? All right. Uh, anything else? I just want you to you know, invest your hard effort here, okay? I'm pretty sure most people will do well in the, in the peptide report. You yeah, know, um, it is based on, let me finish, Andrew. When I graded your, everybody's green yard pre-lab, this time is the last pre-lab of the semester. You would not believe how happy I was grading this pre-lab. I could see a lot of students making major improvements along the way. And at the end, I see major improvement. Okay? I was really happy, okay? So I, 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 I hope you feel the same way. Okay, Andrew, did I interrupt you? Oh uh, no, I um I was trying to see um I had a question. Uh I forgot. You forgot. Okay, then write me your question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else has more question? Hello. If not, I'll say goodbye then. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll see you Tuesday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.